Today on the Sysadmin Tutorials YouTube channel, we're going to be upgrading our vCenter server appliance from 5.5 to 6.0. The upgrade is straightforward. However, there is a security certificate issue along with an auto deploy warning that will appear along the way. I will show you how to resolve these warnings in this video. Let's jump right in and get started. First up, we'll want to take a backup of our vCenter server appliance. To do that, we're going to log into vCenter server. We'll then go ahead and click on hosts and clusters. I'll then expand my management resource pool. And I'm going to click on VM vCenter. Once I click on the virtual machine and within the summary tab, I can see that this virtual machine is running on my ESXi host called vmhost1.vmlab.local. So what I'm going to do is open up the vSphere client and connect directly to this ESXi host. I'll log in with my root username and password. And I'll expand my management resource pool. And in here I can see my VMV center. I'm going to right click on it, select power, and then shut down guest. And I'll select yes to confirm the shutdown. Once the virtual machine is shut down, I'm simply going to right click on it, select snapshot and take snapshot. I'll give the snapshot a name and click OK. Once the snapshot's completed, we'll go back onto the virtual machine and power it up. I'm going to open up the console so I can see the boot up sequence. Now that the server has booted up, we can head on over to the vSphere client web interface. Once we're presented with the login screen, we'll just ensure that we can successfully log into the vSphere web client. Now that we have validated that we can log into our vCenter server, we will locate our vCSA 6.0 ISO file, mount it and run the upgrade. This is my ISO file. I'm going to right click on it and select mount. And I'm going to double click on vcsa-setup.html. If you don't already have the client integration plugin installed for 6.0, you can simply browse the DVD and select the vcsa folder and install vmware-client integration plugin-6.0.0.exe. On the vcsa setup, I'm going to click on upgrade. So we need to ensure that our vCenter server appliance is at least at version 5.1 update 3 or 5.5. As specified here, if you have an earlier version of the appliance, you must first upgrade it to one of the above versions, then you can upgrade it to 6.0. I'm going to click OK to continue with the upgrade. And on the first screen, I'm going to accept the end user license agreement. I'll enter in my fully qualified domain name for my ESXi host, along with the root username and password. I'll accept the certificate warning. The vCenter server appliance does not perform an in-place upgrade of the current vCenter, it runs a new appliance side by side and copies the configuration from the existing vCenter server to the new one. For the new appliance name, I'm going to call it vmvcenter6. Again, this is the virtual machine name. I will enable SSH and we'll click next. The existing appliance version is version 5.5. For existing appliance type, I'm going to select embedded platform service controller as my VCSA 5.5 appliance contains both vCenter and a platform service controller. Within the vCenter server information, I've entered in my fully qualified domain name, administrator at vSphere.local password, and lastly, the VCSA appliance root password. The temporary upgrade files path is pre-populated for you, and you also have the option to migrate performance and other historical data. In this section, I've entered in my ESXi fully qualified domain name, followed by the root username and password. And before proceeding, as we can see in the note down here, we need to make sure that the source ESXi host is not in lockdown mode or maintenance mode. And if the ESXi host is part of a cluster, we need to make sure that that cluster DRS automation level is set to manual or disabled before proceeding. So I'm going to go over to my vSphere web client. And I've got my cluster called VM Lab Cluster selected. And I'm in the Manage tab, Settings, and then vSphere DRS. We can see that our DRS automation level is set at manual. If you need to change your automation level, you can click on Edit. And just use this drop down menu here to change from fully automated or partially automated to manual. Now that we've verified everything, we can go ahead and click Next. So now we've encountered an error message. And if we click on show all, 
we can see that we have an issue with our vCenter server certificate. To resolve this issue, we need to regenerate a new self-signed certificate. Within my VCSA 5.5 appliance, I'm just using a self-signed certificate. And what I'm gonna to need to do is regenerate the self-signed certificate. We need to go into the administration site of the VCSA appliance. To do that, we either go to the IP address or the fully qualified domain name with port 5480. I'll log in here as my root username and password. And once I've logged in, I'm gonna click on the admin tab and right down the bottom here next to certificate regeneration enabled, I'm gonna select yes and then submit. Once I do that, I'm gonna to need to reboot the appliance. To reboot the appliance, I'm gonna click on the system tab and simply click on reboot. And on the confirmation screen, we'll click reboot again. Now the system now will reboot and once it does reboot, it's gonna regenerate a new certificate key which will allow us to continue with our upgrade. Now I'll just give it a few moments to reboot and we'll then go ahead and continue. Our vCenter server appliance has rebooted, so I'm gonna log back into the administration area. And once I've logged back in, I'm gonna click on the admin tab and I wanna set the certificate regeneration enabled back to no and then click submit. Now that we've sorted out the certificate, I'm gonna head back to the VCSA upgrade wizard and we're gonna click next again. Now we are presented with our second warning about auto deploy not running or not configured properly. Within the vCenter server appliance, auto deploy is pre-configured to use the vCenter server system running on the appliance. To proceed with the upgrade, we're gonna stop the built-in auto deploy server. To do that, we're gonna SSH or open a console window to the current vCSA appliance. We're gonna log in as root, and we're gonna type in service space VMware dash RBD dash watchdog space stop. And we're also gonna unregister the local host from the auto deploy service. To do that, we type in auto deploy dash register space dash dash unregister space dash A space local host space dash L. Now we're gonna return back to the wizard and we'll click on next. Another warning is presented to us. After the upgrade, Postgres user password would be the same as the VC user. And also port 22 will be used during upgrade process to transfer data over SSH. Just ensure that you have port 22 open between the source and destination if you are traversing a firewall. We're gonna click yes to continue. And for the appliance size, we can select tiny, small, medium, or large. As this is a lab environment, I'm gonna be selecting Tiny. And you can see here that the Tiny deployment is configured with two vCPUs and eight gig of memory, and that it requires 120 gig of disk space. It also contains vCenter server with an embedded platform services controller, which is what we want. So I'll click Next. I'll select my data store where I want this virtual machine to be deployed. And I'm also gonna click on Enable Thin Disk Mode. We'll move on to step number seven. In step number seven, we're gonna be setting up a temporary IP address on the new VCSA. First, select the temporary network. In my case, it's home lab internal. My network IP address is 192.168.1.16. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Network gateway is 192.168.1.1. And my DNS server is 192.168.1.101. Just a note down the bottom of step number seven, that the network address provided is different than the source appliance network address, in this case it is, and the temporary network configuration provides connectivity to the vCenter server you are upgrading, which in this case also does. Now that I've confirmed that, I'll click next. You have the option here to join the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. For my lab, I'm gonna untick and click next. And in step number nine, we have a summary of all of our settings. Double check this to make sure that they are all correct. And we'll go ahead and click finish. The deployment of the new VCSA appliance and the copying of all the existing data does take some time. So I'm gonna pause the video here and then resume it once the appliance has been upgraded. The VCSA upgrade is now complete. I'm gonna go ahead and click close. And we are gonna open up a new vSphere web client browser. I'm gonna go ahead and accept the certificate. 
and at the login screen I'll enter in my administrator credentials. Once we've logged in, we'll click on Hosts and Clusters. On our vCenter server, we'll click on the Summary tab. And on the Summary tab, we can see here under Version Information that we are running on version 6.0.0. Next, I'm going to post a link for the VMware vCenter Server 6.0 Deployment Guide. The deployment guide covers everything from a fresh install of VCSA 6.0 to multiple upgrade scenario options. Now that our vCenter server is upgraded to version 6, we then have the option to upgrade our ESXi hosts to the same version. There's a few options to upgrade the hosts, such as in-place upgrade or utilizing Update Manager. Please read through the best practices for ESXi upgrades from this document that I've brought up in my browser. I'm going to go back to my vSphere web client and within the management resource pool we can see our old VCSA appliance called VM vCenter which has been powered off. And we can also see our new VCSA 6.0 appliance called VM vCenter 6 powered on right here. Once you've verified that everything is working correctly, maybe within one to two days, you can go ahead and simply delete the old VCSA appliance as this is no longer needed. Now that completes the VCSA 5.5 upgrade to 6.0. I hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.